Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. I'm here for Peter. Parker. Parker. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right, kids. Welcome back to another episode of The Ultimate Spider Cast, starting our uh, tangentially connected to Madam Web movie month. It's almost like we're our own Sony universe, yeah? <laughs> our own. Best. I have Phil joining me as always. She can see your future, and it's not looking good. It is. It's painted in red. <laughs> it's full of fucking hellfire. That's right, kids. Uh, yes, all this month we're going to be uh, talking uh, comics having to do with characters from the Madam Web uh, movie. So, of course, who are we going to start with? Madam, the original Madam Web. Yes. So, this time we're going to cover Amazing Spider-Man 210, her first appearance, and Amazing 216, her next appearance. Written by that... Jaramita Jr. Art, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, uh, the first one is... This, I think this might be his first one. His, uh, first yeah, I thought issue. so. Yeah. And says, we have Denny O'Neill, just so random. You just don't associate Denny O'Neill with Spider-Man. You know? Yeah, I mean, he was. I mean, he was hopping. He uh, was everywhere. For a while. But yeah. Like, still, it's like not the first thing that comes to your mind when you think Denny O'Neill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, even like, uh, even at, if you're talking Marvel, like his Iron Man stuff comes to mind before exactly. Spider Man stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, again, I mean, the the Iron Man stuff. You know, he had the whole thing with Rhodey becoming Iron Man. You know, there's big mm-hmm. stuff going on there. Tony Stark's alcoholism. He always had. Listen, for the most part, outside of Azrael, Denny O'Neill always had a. <laughs> I let Azrael slide because you know that, that was corporate welfare. He was just trying to do something. He was trying to make he was trying to make fetch happen. Come on, issues and come on. two annuals. Enough's enough. Come on, Lilith. Outside of Azrael and his white suit Wonder Woman era, uh... if that I, even the white suit, I can kind of forgive. Like I get what they were trying to go for. I just hate the execution. Mm-hmm. Hate it. I'm like, give me. Give me the challenge. Give me Wonder Woman in some black leather shorts. You know what I mean? Oh like, my. Not a white ninja suit. Ray, is that you? <laughs> that was a little just like, I could forgive it. As she, she wasn't holding a Snickers in her hand. No, she was, exactly. it was fine. Exactly. It's not the worst thing they've ever done to Wonder Woman. <laughs> but it's up there. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's it's so weird. Like, it's 1980, and you're just like, oh, Denny O'Neill. Oh, John Romita Jr. And then you got good old Al Milgram as the editor, you know? Oh yeah, oh, so yeah. you're just like, oh, this is this is gonna be some fun stuff, but like, howdy, <laughs> this is so random. I know, <laughs> it's giving Azrael. Honestly, is how weird it is. I don't think I've read this before because I was trying to remember how we got to that reset at the end, and uh, you know, this, again, we're gonna reset something by the end of this issue, kids. So, yeah. All right, so Amazing Spider-Man number 210, uh, like you said, November 1980, The Prophecy of Madam Web. Uh, like we said, writer Dennis O'Neill, uh, John Romita Jr. Pensler, Joe Sinat Inker, Bob Sharon colorist, letterer Jim Novak, and of course, Alan Milgram, editor. They put some extra respect in his name. <laughs> oh my God, the villain in you this. You could have told me uh, it was with an A-L-A-N, but you know, I would have believed you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, this villain Rupert Dockery. Anytime and the whole this whole issue, anytime someone said Dockery, I'm just Dickery, it, Dickery, Dock. Hey, oh, your no. mama's, yeah. I just heard your Andrew voice. Andrew Clay, please come on our podcast. Like, oh, oh yes, I'm gonna make that happen. Anytime I saw Dockery, I just uh, heard your voice in my head saying Dockery. He's up to some Dickery. <laughs> Hickory Dockery Toy Store. <laughs> I don't know what kind of toy store that is. Hickory Dockery. I'm like, ugh. Okay. All right, Rupert Dockery is talking to five masked hoodlums in the basement storage room of the Daily Globe. What is this, a video off Lil's hard drive? Their instructions... Well, they are trying to do a kidnapping of a good-looking woman, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Their instructions are clear. They are to kidnap the good-looking woman, in quotes, and if necessary, kill anyone who gets in their way. The elevators will be closed and the switchboard inoperative, continues Dockery, so they should have no trouble. Famous last word. You know, anytime someone says, oh, you should have no trouble, you're going to have trouble. It's like you changed it. Exactly. 
Meanwhile, Peter Parker and Deborah Whitman. <laughs> I never got what the, I never got the appeal with Deb Whitman. I, I guess I, I guess it's it was supposed to be oh she you know she's intellectually on his level, but it's just I don't know. Just some of the writing for that character is just not that good. Uh, so yeah. Outside of Black Canary, Denny doesn't write a good love interest. Just saying. Mm. So Peter and Deb are strolling through New York's Chinatown. Peter is surprised to learn that Deb is seeing a clairvoyant. Then Deborah shows Peter the business card of the psychic, Madam Webb. Looks fake. Looks like a phony. A big fat phony. <laughs> Who is that for clicks and views? Madam Webb. <laughs> Peter remarks that Madam Webb looks like a fraud to him. Just then, Peter sees a clock and realizes that he must attend a meeting at the Daily Globe in five minutes, so he has to abandon Deborah on the sidewalk. He arrives. An excuse is better than none, am I right, fellas? I know. He, he can't swing above track. If your girl's going to psychics and getting tarot cards and she wants to know what time you're born, run. You don't want an astrology girl. Run. Oh, I thought I was dating an intellectual. Uh, I have a meeting. I gotta see it. <laughs> So he has to abandon Deborah on the sidewalk. He arrives 15 minutes late, but when he tries to enter the elevator, the guard tells him that no one is allowed in the editorial department before 5 o'clock. Peter finds this peculiar, and he goes to his storage room to change into his Spider-Man costume. Then he climbs up the building to the 14th floor. In the Globe's conference room, Rupert Dockery, that name still gets me, Rupert, uh, Rupert Dockery introduces the newspaper's publisher to Barney Bushkin. April, oh, not Bushkin. April, in April, May. May. Like, come on, and Mike, come on, and Mike Mullaney. <laughs> I know. Remember, I think we got, we covered uh, two issues with April May. I'm like, really, Denny? Yeah. April May. <laughs> Worst of all, April May. <laughs> well, again, this will be the last time we'll see a lot of these characters. This is the first time they've met K.J. Clayton, who, to their surprise, turns out to be a stunning blonde. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She apologizes for having been so secretive, explaining that she has come forward now to turn control of the newspaper over to Rupert Dockery. Suddenly, Rupert Dockery's five hoodlums break through the conference room door. Holding the newsmen at gunpoint, they grab the woman introduced as Miss Clayton, but Spider-Man suddenly smashes into the room through the window. Great timing. The hoodlums immediately open fire, but Spider-Man dodges their bullets and knocks four of them out. Unfortunately, the remaining hoodlum escapes with the woman. As Spider-Man starts out in pursuit, Dockery blocks his way, and the delay is just long enough for the criminal to escape down the elevator. Disappointed at his failure to stop the kidnapping, Spider-Man sees a scrap of paper on the floor, apparently dropped by the criminal or the victim. The paper has Madam Webb's picture on it, and Spider-Man webs- Bro, the first time I saw this- I'm like, what in the hell is going on? I know, I know. So, yes, kids. Uh, yes, her original name was Madam Plot Device. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Spider-Man web swings across town to Madam Web's apartment. He enters through an open window and finds the psychic at the center of a large spider-like, a spider-web-like contrivance. Which... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the word for it. Contrivance. <laughs> Well, hey, branding. Not contraption, <laughs> contrivance. Uh, I mean, it's it's a brand. When Spider, uh, remember when the '90s did this storyline, the animated show? Oh yeah, so bad. It was so bad. Uh, uh, when Spider-Man inquires about the structure, she explains that it is a life support system designed by her late husband, without which she would be dead in a minute. Uh, you know you're not going to see this in the uh, movie, kids. <laughs> That's why we're doing a younger version. Yeah. They're like, we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the contrivance or the old woman. <laughs> uh, she explains that she has certain gifts, and although she is blind, she can see things beyond normal sight. She is That's a, like, hey, that's my shtick. She <laughs> is a clairvoyant. Once again, we, we're ramming that home. Further, she continues, she is able to nurture this power in others who are born with the ability. When Spider-Man asks how reliable her powers are, she says she can guarantee nothing, uh, like a true psychic. Exactly. <clears throat> it's for entertainment purposes only, so I don't get sued, see? <laughs> Spider-Man then hands her the slip of paper with her picture on it and asks whether she can tell him anything about it. <clears throat> the aura from the picture, explains Madam Webb, is that of her newest student, Belinda Bell. 
a model and actor. Oh, one of those. A model and actress. Model slash actress slash waitress. Uh, yeah. Uh, everyone loves cocaine. <laughs> Rude Jane just got out of, got offended for no reason. Hey. Uh. Blinda hands uh, handled the paper in a moment of great peril while cooperating with a second woman, Katrinka Janice Clayton. Yeah, go, That's pretty strong power there. I was going to say, I'd go with KJ, too. <laughs> yeah, Katrinka. <laughs> Katrinka. Janice. Katrinka. Blin- <laughs> Belinda realizes that she has done wrong, continues Madam Webb, and now she is afraid. <clears throat> Although Madam Web cannot tell where Belinda is, Spider-Man presses her, and she has a vision of railroad cars piled up as if there were an accident. She then urges Spider-Man to hurry, because he, unless he can locate Belinda, both she and KJ Clayton will die. <laughs> in the basement of the Hickory Dockery toy store in Lower Manhattan, Belinda Bell is tied to a pillar. The captive of four of Dockery's hoodlums. An electric train set is assembled in the middle of the room. It is this toy that uh, train is this toy train that Madame Webb saw in her vision. The thug explained that their orders are to hold her until they hear from their boss. He might let her go, but he might not. Dockery himself is four miles uptown at the penthouse suite of the Daily Globe with the real KJ Clayton. She is bewildered because she trusted him and now he wants to kill her. Dockery explains that by disposing of her, he will gain complete control of the newspaper. Because she felt old and unattractive, K.J. Clayton operated the Daily Globe as a recluse, never allowing herself to be seen. She went along with Dockery's plan to hire Belinda Bell to appear in her place at the staff meeting, never suspecting what Dockery's real objective was. There is no one to hear her cry for help, says Dockery, and after making a telephone call, he shall attend to her personally. Then he telephones the toy store and tells his hoodlums to dispose of Belinda Bell. Fortunately, Spider-Man arrives at the store in time. Smashing through the glass roof and using the electric train table as a giant shield, he disables the hoodlums and knocks them out by dropping two shelves of toys on them. Uh, so, yes kids, Spider-Man smashing through a lot of glass this time. Windows, skylights. And as we always say here, glass makers in the Marvel Universe, probably... Some of the richest men in the uh, universe. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. Filthy stinking rich. <laughs> I love the pl- I love some of the plot of this. Is like, ah, uh, you know, the rich lady was feeling feeling old and unattractive. Meanwhile, these days she just would have had work done. Exactly. Give the old Joan Rivers, you know. Face lift, boob lift, you know. Butt lift. Mm. Oh, hello, Ankle Ru- lift. Hell, I don't know. Hello, Russell. Yeah, the nineties. 90s- Belly button tuck. <laughs> I don't know. Suck it in. <laughs> the 90s animated series, yeah. Gotta contribute the big laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly. Again, Marvel and DC, man, you want to be a glass maker. Especially in Gotham or New York City. Come on. Or in the TV universe, Arrow. Man, oh, that yeah. first season, there was so much glass to be broken. <laughs> mm. He was always dropping through a skylight. Uh, how we probably owns half the glass makers in that Star City. Come on. No, that's not what they invested in. Everyone loves cocaine? <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. He explains that he found the place when he realized that the trains in Madame Webb's visions were toys. And on check- How? Oh. He's not that smart in this era, so how? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing there was no rapport. Well, didn't he say he checked train yards? But it- uh, You have failed the city, but you have held big glass. Good job, Russell. Ugh. <laughs> oh. mm. But yes, yeah, but, but, and he discovered a toy He's the world's store. greatest detective all of a sudden? Okay. No, he said he checked all the train yards. There was no accident. So I was like, uh, I guess I might be model trains. So yes, he checked uh, yes, the toy store owned by Dockery. Again, I still see Dickery. Then he unties Belinda, who tells him that Dockery is about to do away with K.J. Clayton. Spider-Man web swings to the Daily Globe as fast as he can, and he finds that the penthouse office has been set on fire. As smoke fills the building, Spider-Man smash, smashes through a window once again and rescues Miss Clayton. Man, Denny loves shattering glass. It's so dramatic. It's so him. I know. And rescues Miss Clayton. Then Spider-Man descends to the sidewalk where he finds Dockery entering his limousine. Spider-Man turns the vehicle over, <laughs> tears off the door. Yeah. You've pissed Spidey off. Congratulations. And pulls Dockery out. 
Uh, I love that. It's like, yeah, you ain't getting away that quick, kid. <laughs> Uh, uh, but he kind of messed up his own gig, so. Exactly. Uh, Dockery quickly confesses. Later in his apartment, Peter Parker reads in the Times about Dockery's capture and confession. He also reads that KJ Clayton has decided to dis- suspend publication of the Daily Globe. This is annoying because now Peter has no one to work for, no source of income. Then his telephone rings. Peter answers, and it is Madam Webb, who congratulates him on his success and tells him that she will protect his secret identity as Spider-Man. She also tells him not to worry about money because someone is considering hiring him. Sure enough, J. Jonah Jameson is trying to call Peter at that very moment, irritated when he finds Peter's line busy. Jameson- Damn, the 1980 didn't have call waiting? Oof. Oof. Or if they did, I'm sure Peter can't afford it. (laughs) Again. Man, the things 90 kids take for granted, you know? And again, shout out to Ray, because they did mention this in an editor's note. Yes, because uh, they did mention some stunts Rupert Dock reported in Los Angeles. Uh, these were from... Oh, Spider-Woman, right? Spider- 25 30? Yep, Spider-Man 20... Spider-Woman 25 through 30, so... Great stuff, man. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, and again, kids, uh, go make sure... Uh, go listen to another great podcast. Uh, to Know Her is to Fear Her, the Spider-Woman podcast with uh, Saren and that other guy i forget what his well, name spider baby and old spider spider man oh the spider old babies. man spider <laughs> ray ray <laughs> the spider babies exactly with uh with saren and uh what's his face the hard master <laughs> which he will be while we're watching madam web the hard a master boys, a lot of boys are gonna be bricked up in that movie theater i don't know that i want to go <laughs> Uh, there's gonna be a. I'm, I'm really debating. Should I just do the early show? There's gonna be a huge. I mean, uh, I think there's gonna be a huge rise in uh, you know, young young men suddenly hitting puberty. Uh, all of a sudden, huge rise in large popcorn order right there. To cover it up there. I think, think my ten year old's about to hit puberty. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm still gonna be. A, I'm still. I'm still thinking I'm gonna be an a hole and go as. A, do, do my spider ghost cosplay. I think I'm just going to do it. I'm like, well, here's a better female spider person. Oh <laughs> or I can be like, oh, I can go with Silk and be like, here's a worse spider person. I don't... Oh, come on. Don't be don't be bad mouth and Silk. You know she has her fans. Come on. Uh, what the F? <laughs> All right. Uh, pheromones. Pheromones. Enough said. Exactly. All right. So what you think of this one, Lil? <laughs> like, Wow. It is all the trappings of Vinny O'Neill for sure. <laughs> yeah, see, we're gonna kidnap the we're gonna kidnap the broad. See, yeah. See. And this Madam Web thing, and then they like forget about it for six issues. So I'm just like, oh, okay, that seemed like a bigger deal than <laughs> than what it turned out. I know there's there, there's a, there's some old clairvoyant woman out there with Peter's identity. You know, this is like really we're just gonna forget about this for six issues. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go kill that old lady. Turn off her damn plot armor. And again, at some point, we got it. I mean, I know we did it on Patreon, but we're going to have to do an edited version of the Juggernaut story because she's in that. Yes. Oh, oh, we might do a month of Juggernaut because, I mean. <gasps> Can we? Yes, yes. Like, low-key, I like Juggernaut. He is hilarious. Because, the, I mean, there's that story. And then, like, I believe the last, uh, I think the last issue of Marvel Team-Up was him and the X-Men versus the Juggernaut. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. that that'll be good. That'll be fun. The effing juggernaut. He's so ridiculous. But, like, it's crazy because he's the juggernaut, right? He's super strong. Like, he's supposed to be, like, this actual man, but he is, like, actually hilarious. Oh, yeah. Like, how epic of a fail he is as a character. Like, it's just so funny. He's actual cannon fighter, despite being named Juggernaut. Like, it is chef's kiss, the most ironic thing. It's so funny because he's indestructible and unstoppable. But he's an idiot. But again, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. That's his Achilles heel is his stupidity. (laughs) And again, it's you know, it's like oh, Professor X is like oh, it's his stupid brother, you know, step brother, step so brother, womp chicka womp womp, and uh, your fantasies legally. Oh, what they're making porn? What? <laughs> you know, if that if that's your thing, your step brothers. I, I, it's so weird that they specific step brothers. And I'm just like, what are you, Will Ferrell and uh, John C. Riley? Like, I guess I want to say, oh, great no. movie, best Will Ferrell movie, fight me. I I guess they didn't want to like uh, d- uh, dilute that Xavier bloodline back in the day, so they're like, "Oh no, he has a stepbrother." No, no. But yeah, like I said, I couldn't remember like when they put Peter back at the uh, Daily Bugle. So yeah, 
<laughs> that last page. Kind of like the Daily Globe, and then the Daily Globe got just so. It's like, I think it's Peter. He just attracts bad things. Bad, it doesn't matter where he works. Bad, bad things are going to happen at his place of employment. Bad mojo. Yeah. But I love that last panel with James and just chomping all the cigar, a big puff of smoke coming out of you know. Well, did this guy just have like a oh no, a he, heart attack. Uh, did he have a heart attack or was it the ner- I I knew he had nervous breakdown, I think around two hundred, so it's just Yeah, it was the nervous breakdown. But there he is back uh, chomping on that cigar, just I can't believe I gotta call this kid. <laughs> so look at that look on his face, he's like, Damn it, buddy, the answer is fucking you know. Quit talking about the. Quit talking to those to those other kids about those records and pick up the phone. <laughs> Eight tracks at this point, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, they had vinyl in nineteen eighty. The whole word. I remember I was really young. It was like somebody's like it was like an old truck in a junkyard, and I was like, "That's what an eight track is." I rem- I remember uh, my parents said. Uh, uh, had an eight track in the house, you know, just like the stereo system. You know, there was the eight, you know, you know how we had the uh, CD player at uh, uh, cassette tape combo. Uh, my parents had the eight track and like the uh, the record player for the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, times have changed. Now we all just listen to music on our phone or Alexa. I remember it had like the little. It had like little like. Uh, switches on the front of it you know for the different you know i yep. just i had fun playing with that as a little kid i was like choo, 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 choo. analog buttons and switches man mm-hmm. it's like everybody loves mechanical keyboards and um what do they call them uh, macros mm. yeah anyway uh, let's get to 216 because this is ridiculous i know you thought this was ridiculous kids wait till we get to the next one same team too so yep all right, Amazing Spider-Man 260. Six months later, kids. Amazing Spider-Man 216 Marathon. They're like, they're like remember that thing <laughs> from, 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 from half a year ago? Yeah, we're back to it. Yeah, from May 1981. And, oh, like the Frightful Four. Come on. Never going to be the Sinister Six. Though. You know what? We have to cover that one day, and we have to have Justin, because I think... I think that's I think that's the one with Namor, maybe or or maybe Namor's after this. But there is a some there is a Denny Aris Spider Man with uh, Namor, which we have to cover one day with just got it. with Justin. Of course, of course. My favorite biscuit. Sandman and Trapster, though, mm. uh, and Wizard. That's why I like Ooh. it. That's why I like the uh, version. I'll definitely the... have an edible for that. Hey, oh, I know. That's why I like the fantastic, uh, the frightful four from later on when they have Claw and Titania. Yeah. Yeah. Following. Was that one point where Medusa was in it too? Yeah, I think that was like one of the first iterations. Yeah, yeah. Then she went good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the first. Yeah, the first. Yeah, because I think it was her wizard, a Trapster, and Sandman. Yeah. The wizard, such a bad leader. Eventually, two of those two of those people would go straight. <laughs> Sandman's debatable. He's playing the long game. No, oh my god, don't get me started on that. No, they had him reform, and then like when they did the reboot of Spider Man in nineteen ninety nine, yeah, I think it, I think it was Burn had the Wizard yeah. throw, throw Sandman in under a hair hair dry, dryer and be like, "Here, yep, you're evil, you're evil again." <laughs> Damn Burn! All right. Following his battle with the Frightful Four, Spider Man leaves his temporary lodging in a posh hotel to return to his newly repaired apartment. <clears throat> in rough shape after his last battle, Spider-Man decides to go visit Deborah Whitman to have someone care for him. Well, if that isn't the most manly thing Peter's ever done. <laughs> I'm sick, babe. Can I have some chicken noodle soup? <laughs> oh, no. we were, You know what kind of tender and loving care he wanted. Oh, of course. Because otherwise, he could have just went to eat. Chicken noodle soup is, you know, warm and wet. Wow! <laughs> You know he could have. You know if he want, just wanted medical care, he could have went to Aunt May. Come on. Exactly. Well. Oh no, she might have had a heart attack. Sorry. Exactly. What? Oh, heavens! Well, not that that would have been a bad thing. You sprained your ankle. Oh, oh no. Uh, changing back into a civilian guy, Spider Man take or Peter Parker takes the subway to uh, Whitman's home. Along the way, he wonders if he can start another relationship following the death. Oh, here's our floating heads of uh, past romance. Uh, the death of Gwen Stacy and a subsequent breakup with Mary Jane Watson. He's like, I gotta get my boop. I gotta get my Peter wet, man. I don't care at this point. <laughs> so if he's, he's making him angry. It's a, oh, yeah. He, and careless. He's frustrated. I mean, yeah, no woman. Yeah, no, nothing for a while. Grateful for battle. Yeah. He comes to the conclusion that he is ready for another relationship. Uh, oh, wait. He, he comes to the conclusion he's ready for another relationship. Mm-hmm. 
as he oh shut up as he gets off the subway <laughs> it's like my mom listens to this <laughs> peter passes an election poster for barney wicker so- <laughs> barney wicker boo boo barney wicker boo <laughs> Uh, soon he knocks at her apartment door. When he asks to come in, Deborah tells him that it wouldn't be a good idea. That's when Deborah's guest, a man named Biff Rifkin, Biff Rifkin? comes to the door and introduces. Back to the future. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a good idea if you come in, Peter, unless we're like in one of those uh, videos from Little Hard Drive. He's like, "Well, this is not what I was picturing." <laughs> I think it's oh, a... sloppy seconds. Oh. I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's what Debla was picturing. Double biscuits for me. Well, that's why you can't just do the pop in, you know. You gotta that's call true. first. That's true. Unless you're breaking out of jail. Yes, that's a Seinfeld reference. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, when George was dating the inmate, yeah. We know you're bald. She, she, he loves the popping. <laughs> uh, Biff Ripkin. Hurt to see Deborah with another man, Peter quickly excuses himself and you leaves. You abandoned her on the sidewalk, sir! I know, and, and again, you know, how long has he been kind of dating her? And he's like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for another relationship. I'm not sure. And nobody I'm... likes a wishy-washy guy. And Biff Ripkin, that just screams money, right? It screams something. Oh! <laughs> This ripper a fan. Scream at! <laughs> uh, wait, where did I? Uh, depressed Peter. Uh, hail. <laughs> Little's least favorite, depressed Peter. <laughs> Little has no time. In case of the Osborns in the other direction this time. Little's has no time for depressed Peter. <laughs> Uh, Peter's depressed over his current love life in too much pain to put off his injuries any longer. <gasps> when he thought he was getting it's laid. Like, well, I can't get any, so I might as well go to the hospital. I know, when he, when he thought he was getting laid, man. I mean, he was trekking across town on that bad leg, and all of a sudden, ow, it hurts. Uh, yeah, bu- 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 put it, uh, my, uh, Peter decides to web sling to Greenwich Hospital to have himself looked after. Meanwhile, not far away, a husband argues with his wife over her participation in a city marathon that is scheduled for that day. Put a feather in your cap. That's going to be important for later. Yes. Plot device. There's your. There's this. There's this. Effort, this issue's uh, Denny plot device. Like the title of a marathon. So I argued about a marathon. Okay, definitely going to put that feather hmm. in my cap. Thank hmm. you, sir. A political candidate in a marathon. Hmm. What do they have? Hmm. Riddle me this. What do they have in common? <laughs> Riddle me this, riddle me that. Uh, later at Greenwich Hospital, Peter Parker has his injuries tended to by a doctor. The hospital is busy with marathon runners being brought in for injuries. It's then that Peter overhears a group of men planning to assassinate someone. Hearing an off the cuff comment about their victim never running again, Peter assumes that they're going to kill one of the marathon runners. His attempts to learn the identity of the men he overheard fails. Peter decides to do something about it and gives the clairvoyant known as Madame Webb a call to see if she can shed some light on his on this mystery. So, I'm, so again, I mean, it works for the story, but I'm guessing we're not, I guess, I guess he's not carrying any spider tracers with him. No, he was too busy thinking he was going to get some, so, yeah. Mm. He didn't really pack let, accordingly. Let me see. I only have room for uh, one thing in my wallet, either a condom or a spider tracer. What should I bring? Hmm. <laughs> And you didn't make the right choice this time. No, you chose poorly. <laughs> uh, say, like, babe, you live in Marvel's New York. You have more chance of using the spider tracer than a condom. So, wow. <laughs> uh, 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 Madam Webb doesn't know the specifics of this assassination plot, of course, but tells Peter that he sh- that should she learn more, she will contact him. With no other leads, Peter decides to finally head home. <clears throat> Upon arriving at his apartment, Peter is amazed at the repair work done by the cleanup crew, but discovers his clothing reeks of smoke after the recent fire. That's when his noisy neighbor begins singing again. (laughs) Peter goes to wash up, and while lost in thought, he comes to the conclusion that he cannot shirk his responsibilities and must make an attempt to stop the gunman from killing their intended victim. 
yeah, that noisy neighbor, I mean, that comes to a head, what was it, like, 217 or 218? I'm like, but that was, like, an ongoing plot. I'm like, did, was this Denny, like, blowing off the smoke? Denny's, did, like, yeah, getting his uh, anger out about his noisy neighbor for sure. I think. Uh, his Kramer, if you will. D- Denny might be a little bit of a petty prince. He might be a petty prince. I don't know. Uh, the next morning, Spider-Man waits atop the... Verrazano narrows bridge to monitor the nah, the marathon for danger. No sooner has he learned, no sooner has he arrived, does he spot a car speeding toward the runners. He quickly webs up. You think up, it was a protest? Hey oh Oh, burn! <laughs> sorry, sorry, too topical, my bad. He quickly webs up the tires, <laughs> stopping the vehicle, checking the. I dr- don't think that's how that works, but okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you saying? We have a problem with the laws of physics here. It was a slow. It was a. It was a gradual stop. Checking the driver, Spider Man discovers that this is not a would be assassin, but a drunk driver. Uh, as that he checks. Yeah. As he attends to the drunk, he doesn't hear a nearby emergency phone begin to ring. Soon the marathon begins, and Spider Man follows along in the hopes of stopping the shooter. Along the way, he saves the life of a wheelbar- wheelchair bound racer who gets knocked off the bridge. Uh, I know this is the Marvel universe, but this is like the deadliest marathon i've ever heard of oh you've obviously never really been to a marathon things like that happen it's, i like i would never do a new york marathon no, that, no this is like so true to so like true to life. so like crazy drunk driver guy gets knocked off the bridge yeah uh, you well, see crazy stuff in marathons i don't know what it is in people's brains yeah let's go mess with the marathoners well at least let's they... give them hot coffee instead of water yeah no that that happens people are kind of mean and vindictive it's weird it's like they're just trying to they're just trying to have fun running man like they're already messed up in the head because yeah. they think running is fun. As somebody training for a marathon, it's not fun. Well, at least but they got to get it off the bucket list. Well, at least they didn't hit the snooze. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get the AMPM mixed up. Why separate knob? Why separate knob? <laughs> oh, little bastard! <laughs> Further along the way, he stops what he thinks is the shooter, but it turns out to be a man carrying a banjo. Russell, is that you? <laughs> I don't do marathons. I don't get variant covers. <laughs> Only if it's sponsored by Tobacco and Mountain Dew. I spend too much money on Tobacco and Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> the little Justin can go in the background. Uh, 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 he also saves some kids who are at danger when the fire escape they're on collapses. Man, 1980s New York is dangerous. <laughs> Oh, and for, come on, the infrastructure, come on. Uh, as he is attending to the kids, he doesn't hear a nearby payphone begin to ring. Hmm, I wonder who this could be. As he near- like, what is this, the Matrix? <laughs> oh, then he was oh. on, oh, the Warshawskis, did they, uh. Yeah, the Warshawski sisters, maybe they owe Marvel a little money. Uh, which, I shouldn't say that, because Warner Brothers, is DC owns Warner Brothers. So, yeah. Know, Warner Brothers owns DC. Or Denny's. Let's, a, let's put a pin in that. Or Denny's estate, at least. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As he nears the end of the race, Spider-Man also stops a pickpocket from victimizing some of the spectators by webbing his hands. This is like the busiest day in Peter's life, bro. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you hate when you get that webbing on your hands, Lil? <laughs> can't relate oh <laughs> little in a full hazmat suit i don't do twinkies or toaster strudels so well makes love in a hazmat suit uh <laughs> the best way well on- <laughs> <laughs> little, little, it's like through a sheet no full hazmat uh little little makes her uh artificial lovers wear hazmat suits come on <laughs> Like why does why does this bedroom look like something out of Dexter's Hill <laughs> Room? <laughs> Saran wrap everywhere. Makes cleanup easier, and you can wrap your victims up and dispose of them later. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> two for one. Always got to be thinking ahead. Those who pre- prepare uh, fail to plan, be prepared to get caught. <laughs> Little of Hellfire's love life. My pro tips, Yes, kids. Uh, Don't pull it out unless you're going to use it. That's true for guns and penises. <laughs> Best advice I can give you, kids. One of the run- <clears throat> one of the runners suffers a heart attack. Spider Man rushes him to a nearby hospital. As he reaches the finish line, he happens upon 
J. Jonah Jameson, along with his Aunt May. <laughs> That's my favorite part! <laughs> it's just so random. Jameson's there, Aunt May and Nathan are there. <laughs> Jameson and Spider-Man trade barbs, and ultimately, Spider-Man webs up the camera Jameson is using to take photos of the marathon. But he's not trying to pay anybody to take, he's doing it himself, you know? know. You, gotta, you gotta respect the hustle. And I love the pettiness of Peter. He's like, you're not paying me for pictures? F you, I'm webbing up that camera. <laughs> uh, mm. Finally, we address this ringing payphone. Oh, yes. Finally, someone gets the attention. Uh, gets his attention to a ringing payphone and discovers that it is a call from Madam Webb. The woman has discovered that the assassins are waiting at the finish line and are waiting for Barney Wicker to make a speech as he is their intended target. Get it? Political candidate ha, running? Ha, subtle, subtle, subtle little hit in the beginning. And it's just so funny. I mean, I guess it could. I, don't, I mean, boy, talk about a roundabout way to get to your plot point. And coincidence. Jeez, Louise. And coincidence, it's all happening at the same place. You know, it's like, okay. It is New York, though. It does, New York kind of does work like that. If you know, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, Spider Man tracks them down to the rooftop where they're setting up their sniper rifle. <laughs> Uh, Spider-Man easily dodges their bullets and incapacitates them by ripping off the top of a water tower. Yeah, he is. He is frustrated. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ladies, you thought your man was uh, gone uh, testy when he was frustrated. Uh, having failed, the, having foiled this assassination attempt, the marathon concludes uninterrupted. So. <laughs> well, ma'am, you are a flop. <laughs> Go away. Again, well, this is, was this like a Seinfeld episode where it's like if it were, this was happening today instead of all the ringing payphones, she just would have called it cell phone. Exactly. This is exactly what it is. Hey, tell me. It does feel like a Seinfeld episode for better or for worse, right? It's like the A plot, the B plot, and the C plot come together. <laughs> it's like, oh, Madam Webb's back. Oh, we got the marathon. We got the political candidate. We got Peter. Peter's love life. You know, we got all these kids and side missions. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Literally, it's just Peter flipping his way downtown. Wait a minute. Fast. Wait a minute. Let's all break up the whoppers out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny, but like, does not feel like a Spider-Man story. Sorry. Like, it's just like Denny and Spider-Man are not the vibes for me. What's like, so weird? Not, to... This is not the character for Denny. <clears throat> It, well, again, it's so weird because both of the issues we covered, there's no super villain in it. It's all just random. It's all thugs and, you know. It's all Seinfeld. Exactly. It's a <laughs> Exactly. But yeah, none of, the, I mean, again, he, uh, Denny did the Frightful Four, the previous issue. But yeah, the ones we covered, no super villains in sight. Yeah, yeah. Like, Matt Webb is just like a flop. A flop of a plot contrivance. I'm sorry. <laughs> is that why? I, I... She does get better, but. Not it, by much. Is that why when she comes back, it's like, oh, we have to have the juggernaut. You know, it has to be something big like the juggernaut. I really feel like, yeah, they're like, oh, this all just seems so mundane. But I do like life, a day in the life of Spider-Man stories. But like, I don't know. This is just like when you're introducing a character like Madam Web, when you're looking back in retrospect, it's just like, huh. Yeah, because it, it almost seems like she was just, it's just like a secondary thought in these stories. It's like, yeah, I, this is just for shekels for later. I'm just, I'm just, I'm paving the, I'm paving the driveway right now to make my shekels later is what it feels like. Yeah, because even the cover of this at the bottom, don't miss the, re don't miss the return of Madam Web. And I'm just like, was like, anyone, babe, she was in a panel. Calm down. Was, was anyone clamoring for her after that first appearance? They were, I, I don't think. Or was this I think people wanted to know, hey, she knows Peter's identity. What the hell, bro? Was this another? And we still didn't address was this another Azrael situation where Denny's like, I like the character. She's coming back. At least Marvel is not all about cor corporate welfare. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where this went on for a hundred issues. Yeah, because you know, and like, I, like as just like a regular, like a, a well-paced story, funny stuff happens. Yeah, but like as a Spider-Man story, mm, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I love we just had to throw Jameson and Aunt May into the middle of the story. That that's a love triangle waiting to happen. I mean, literally, Aunt May's there for, and Nathan are there for one panel. Remember, see, we have side characters. Remember, I remember. He remembers. <laughs> and Aunt May did it with her subtle, uh, with her subtle little jab, because Jameson's like, whoa, here I am. Uh, why am I here, Miss Parker? Aunt May and Madam Webb look alike. That's all I'm going to say and keep it moving. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, a, you know, that's a, you think that's like the subtle way. It's like, oh, you know, on a subconscious level, that's why Peter kind of trusts her and stuff, because she looks like Aunt May. And... Yeah. Not that it's just lazy artistry. No. <laughs> what are you saying? All, all old women look alike? 
in the Marvel Universe for a p- particular point in time. Yeah. Just like how kind of all blondes kind of looked a little bit alike for a while. <laughs> but hey, after a couple decades, then they both got de-aged. <laughs> As you do. Well, we have Marissa Tomei playing a character, you know. Final one. Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, the first two appearances of Madam Web. Uh... Flops! <laughs> Again, again, we could have focused more on Madam Web, but uh, like she's in a spider-like device and she's clairvoyant. Like, okay, like that means something. So tell me. <gasps> Denny, Denny literally gave Spider-Man a person in the chair. We all know how that works out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, Ned, in the movies. Or is that kind of just like uh, I don't want to say lazy, but uh, that's just like a more convenient style. Oh, it Sto- is. Storytelling is. device where it's like, oh, the psychic, or how to get this information. The psychic told me. <laughs> oh, that hacker told me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, you I know mean, how psych- I feel about those hackers. Psychic seems even more like just uh, it's that like, is that is oh, beyond. She, she's literally just pulling answers out of mi- out of the air. Yeah. That is like the ultimate. Yeah. That's the ultimate evolution of that trope for sure. And, and oh, she, she knows all this stuff. So how does she get me information? Ah, she knows my identity. Which, again, we're going to eventually Osborne that away, but yeah. Yeah. You kind of have to. <laughs> All oh, right. Let's, let's talk some new stuff. Oh, yeah. I I didn't know if I should... I, well, I kind of messaged Chichester about this. I didn't know if I should bring it up on this show when we were talking to him. But, uh, yes, Terror made an appearance in Spider-Man 2099 this week. How was it? You know I didn't read it. It was all right. I mean, again, I mean, it's just, just Steve Orlando playing with, you know, Terror's, you know immortal and stuff and i think i saw a lot of people saying they kind of liked it mm-hmm. and they wanted to know more about it so there's that well that's what i was uh, i was even thinking about saying the chichester too it's like you know after black armor may uh, they should do another series like that but let him play with terror yeah Get that. I'd, I'd like to see that we, yeah definitely because i mean more than daredevil i mean he, he so didn't... i mean as a person who doesn't like miguel o'hara would i is it worth it for the terror stuff i think so because like this mini series like um because you know it's Saturday, Mama's got to go make her I know. third trip. Well, this series they're playing with the theme because, like, one issue, it, it, they're it's almost like the Universal Monsters thing because, like, one issue, Dra- Dracula shows up. Uh, uh, there was a werewolf last time. Oh, you know what they're doing uh, next time, Lilith, for the last issue? What's that? Man Thing. Oh, I'm gonna pick that up. Twenty ninety nine Man. Th- that's thank next, you for reminding next me. Next week, next week, because yeah, this thing's been uh, weekly all month, so. All right, cool beans. So yes, twenty ninety nine man thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, techno man thing. Well, that's that's kind of what Lil's trying to uh, create. That? That's my whole shtick now at this point. Yeah. She's trying to create. Uh, oh, sp- call me Doctor Frankenstein, baby. <laughs> oh my. Uh oh, and uh, did you read Spider Woman? Speaking of uh, characters, well, like- let's get to the bad part first. Like for the, the t- Spider Superior Spider Man number three, five dollar book. Let's let's talk about that. Oh, uh, yeah. that way we can end on a happy note. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, happy ending. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't, I was really excited for this, and now Dan Slot's being Dan Slot, unfortunately. <laughs> and I, I the lo- only thing I'm here for is the art at this point. I, I love the summary at the beginning where Peter's like, <clears throat> "Yeah, you put your brain in a clone, and you were a Spider-Man, and then some mi- some some mystery event happened to push you back into your original body." You know that you know at the end of that series, I didn't write slot. You know, slot saying that at the end of that series, I didn't write. So. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Which once again, it was Mephisto. So. Oh. <laughs> Mephisto's never the answer, babes. The, you <laughs> never, know what? He should never be the answer. They they were playing with that for a while, and then they just dropped it because I know, like, I think it was an issue with the champions because Charlie told me about it. Like, I think Mephisto appeared to Miles at least once or twice. So it was, yeah, it was I almost like, that. oh yeah, he's had, he has like a hard on for all the spider people. And then they kind of dropped that. And Daredevil. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the skin tight suits. Oh my. <laughs> oh, are you? Uh, are you saying? Uh, Mephisto's a biscuit lover. Okay, my oh, favorite oh, biscuit. Absolutely, <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind. Ah, uh, I love it. Mephisto? No, not from hell. From a long way to, to biscuit town. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, I, I'd pay. I'd pay that to have uh, Justin voice Mephisto. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, that's but I, I do like that um, he at least is paying homage to Stanley and uh, Stan and Steve, you know. Oh yeah, because of the master planner base and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it's that question. It's like, do people become evil because they can't trust other people? Like, what makes a person evil? You know that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Like, I think it's a it's it's a little bit too much for him. He bit off a little bit more than he could chew with mm-hmm. the context in which he's trying to take the plot. But like. It's okay, but it's definitely Dan Slot being Dan Slot at this point. Like he just can't seem to get over himself sometimes, unfortunately. And I, I don't feel like he has a strong enough editor to rein that in to truly make this book great. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's good, but it could be so much better if they could just rein him in a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I he 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 dragged it on a little too long, but I did like in the beginning, like when he's trying to pretend to be Auk as the Superior Spider Man. Yeah. You worthless curds. Curse! <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I just, it could have been so much more. Like, you're, you're, like, I just feel like we're wasting the art of Mark Bagley. Yeah. A little bit. Well, again, as we pointed out, I think they, they figured they needed an extra something for this. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it actually is getting slightly better, but at the same time, like, they're letting him off the reins more and more, and I don't think that that's a good thing. Especially when they're charging five dollars for this book. Yeah, and what did you? Especially th- with the state of um, the way things are with the spider books, like with Amazing not being the best, and mm-hmm. like now Ultimates definitely, rightly so, should probably have all the spotlight. So like he needs to, he needs to tighten up. Yeah, I mean this. I mean this is when I really miss Charlie because you know Charlie would be defending this. Oh left yeah, and he right. would have such a different perspective. No, we're showcasing the brilliance of Otto Octavius. <laughs> but I, well, this is the thing. I just really don't feel like slots up to it anymore like i think he's just falling back on like you know what came before it and he's not really trying to push the envelope unfortunately and if he was actually trying to push the envelope of that particular aspect of it i'd be here for it but i don't really feel like he's trying to push that aspect of it well i wonder if between as much as he could between him and the like edit will editor would the editorial let them create us i mean again the whole that's the appeal of it, though, right? That's yes. the premise. That was our promise. But, I, like, it's like they're not... Charlie and I kept pointing out... Charlie and I kept pointing out, you can have your cake and eat it, too. You can have original Auk, and then you can have a copy of that brain in a clone body saying he's a superior Spider-Man. I mean, we, we love clones in Marvel, right? Well, well, not do we love a we love a horny doombot, right? So it's like best of both worlds. We're not, so we're not, we're not loving Spider-Clones these days. Did you see in April, uh, Chasm's back? Yeah, we we yeah we kind of briefly mentioned that yeah. a while ago. I think Russell brought it up. Oh, so. yeah, which I think yeah. is I think is going to be like a uh, like a jumping off point because they are doing like a uh, Ben Riley Kane miniseries somewhere along the way here. He's so. like, give me my neck. You ain't no Scarlet Spider. Here's an idea. Let's make Ben good in the Scarlet Spider let's again. Kill Kane. Yeah, no, let, no, let's no, kill no, Kane. no, 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 no. They want a chasm. Let's make Kane chasm. Like I said, kill Chasm. <laughs> he's th- he started- kill Chasm, kill Kane. He's- one fell swoop. He started as a villain. Because if Kane becomes Chasm, nobody cares. That was, sorry, that was Kane's original shtick. He was the villainous cl- clone. So like, you, know, you, you want your Chasm, make it that. Again, let's kill Kane and Chasm, well, yeah. one fell swoop. <laughs> sorry, I've never cared for that character. Wow, it sounds like something. But yeah, let, let's, again, let's, let's talk some good stuff. Spider-Woman number three. Yes. Uh, I just wish it was the other Diamondback. That is just my other. Yes, that's just my only critique. Yes, of it. preach. But everything else is so good. Yes, like it is. It is so well plotted, and the pacing is amazing. And I love, I love me an angry Spider Woman. Chef's kiss. Oh, uh, what did you? Somebody think? needs to hand her a Snickers bar. She is upset. Exactly. Well, you're wiped from reality and brought back. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be a little. <laughs> she, rightly so. I didn't say she wasn't right. I know. So, I know. She is. She is kicking everybody's ass, and I just I love it so freaking much. What did you? This, th- this is exactly what we needed from Spider Woman. I mean, yeah. why we had to take a break from her is beyond me. Why we had to do the thing we did to her is beyond me. But like, where she is back with a vengeance, and it is so good. It's kind of crazy that it's during a, a gang war event, but like, it's the best book. Like, yeah. it's so tangential that it's it's, just, it's a Spider Woman. It's book. so it's good, and I. But I think it would be even better if they didn't. Uh, make him tied in the baggage. gang war yeah yeah, yeah. But, but i think it's a reason to read gang war too like you know what what did you think about the plot twist with green mamba i saw people calling it the bendis kind of but like i can i can accept it yeah well, well, the, yeah you know i can accept it like it, it i think it has to do with like the actual event thing maybe yeah well with the re, you know yeah the whole you know she got wiped and now she's back and yeah 
Yeah, so it's like, how are we gonna fix that? So it's like you have kind, you kind of have to take that lump if you want one or back. So I, I, I it's it's worse lumps to be had. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, I. But yeah, these two are firing on all cylinders. Um, Steve and Car- uh, Oh yeah. Carla. Oh yeah, so. the writing's good. The art is great. Yeah. Like they are, they are in sync, and it's only the third issue, so it's like so good to see that it didn't, it didn't, it took them no time mm-hmm. to, to get in sync and really give us something great. And it's not a spider book, but I wanted to mention this somewhere. Did you read Punisher? Yeah. Of course. Of course. I'm I'm keeping my eye on Punisher. (laughs) And again, Brad, again, yeah. You know, David Pep, friend of the show. Like they fixed it. Friend of the show, David Peppo is bringing back one of Chichester's uh, characters here. Yeah. I'm very surprised that he was able to turn this around. Because the last, no, no offense to the guy before. Like, I just didn't care for all that craziness. Yeah. Well, again, and the war journal stuff, I didn't care for either. So it was just kind of like, well, again, it, uh, what are we doing with Punisher? And like, again, I, and again, too, it's, you know, I know it's a trope to like replace the, the, the character with someone else, but it's like, there's no Frank Castle baggage here. Yeah. The, that decades of just flogging himself. It's just like, you know, it's a new guy. It's pretty much day one. Yeah. You still yeah, have, you still listen, have, the, you still have Punisher the dead. Punisher should be action oriented. Yeah. And this is an action heavy issue. And I mean, I mean, I mean, the theme is there, the dead family. But besides that, you can do whatever, do what you want. Yeah. And if you've, and if you it's co- high concept elements too. Like I always thought that Punisher could be so much more, but like you, it's that balance you have to strike right between being like a crazy, like say, Oh, Frank Castle and Hydra, you know, the Punisher, Punisher fighting Hydra and being a part of like, you know, you have to kind of fight that, mm-hmm. but he should kind of have a little bit more of an edge, a little bit more high concept than just, you know, street level. He had a potential. And like, remember what I said, like the problem with Frank Castle was like, oh, you can never make him too competent because you can't be killing off villains. I mean, with I mean, this guy. Well, makes... you, do, you do the Deadpool approach, right? Everybody's yeah. just can't fight her a one off. But it just makes, fine. but it just makes more sense here because they... there's more evil in the yeah. world. <laughs> you know, than just the kingpin. Yeah, yeah, but again, too. I mean, this guy is, you know, he's newer, and and too, it's like I don't think he has as much a killer. He's like, I'll mess a guy up, but you know, I don't necessarily have to kill everybody I come across. And we don't ever have to be reminded of mercy bullets. <laughs> exactly. But yes, kids, uh, yeah, make sure you, uh, if you haven't, uh, check out uh, Capes and Lunatics episode three fifteen, where I talk to David Peppos himself. Yeah, this is a yeah. I, I like this take a lot. Um. I I I I am gonna need a a regular Punisher book though. What a Frank yeah. Castle? Yeah, I'm gonna need them to fix that. I, I think I think I I have a feeling Frank Castle is gonna be showing up sooner or later. So yeah, I just think they wanted to set this guy. They wanted to set this new Punisher up before we. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Frank, yeah, and that that's gonna be fun to have those two running around and seeing where they collide for sure. But mm-hmm. we gotta fix Frank Castle. Oh yeah, again I think we uh, they they just. But need... yeah, it makes sense to set up a, a legacy character for Punisher, right? Especially after what happened and why we got to this point. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh yeah, they 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 needed to uh, to, uh, basically do what they're doing with the Justice League over at DC. We needed uh, to let they uh, give Frank some time off because of uh, the neck beards in this uh, world. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, I mean, I think it was a pretty solid week for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, not you, Power Pack. Go sit down. Oh my! <laughs> but uh, also, Re- Re- uh, Resurrection of Magneto. Yes. Was really good. Um, I- Strange Academy uh, was really good. I liked that one. Hmm. And then X Force was good too. So. Oh yes! Oh yes! Because we're finally gonna. Uh, I see a lot of people clamor for Immortal Thor. Are you reading that? It's Al doing the Mortal. Yeah, it's it's again. it's it's been, it's been entertaining. Yeah, I've I've been enjoying that. I mean, I, I'm, like I said, like I, I just, I never saw Al Ewing doing Thor, but like it's a mortal Thor, so it's like, hmm, okay. I mean, you th- do a little darker, a little more detailed, a little more, yeah, adult. I mean, this week he did it basically Thor and Loki flashback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. young Thor and young Loki, mm-hmm. and they're doing their little brotherly quest. I, I think it's really cute, and, but like at the same time, a little dark, a little mysterious. It's. It's giving Thor something it needed, a little edge. I felt like that's why I never really could like really relate to Thor. I felt like Thor was too gimmicky, too hokey, like just kind of corny, honestly, the way a lot of people write him. But well, I felt that, at that edge. I felt that too, like back in the day. That, that's why when uh, yeah, they brought in Eric Masters and that kind of dra- drug me in. Yeah. 
<clears throat> that, that's always been my thing about Thor. It's just like, you're a god, but like, look at you. Look who you're hanging out with, babe. Well, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, that's uh, the, the more current. Inter- Thor is a god among mortals, you know? It's, this is yeah. the very opposite of what DC is. Well, yeah, that's the, all the modern interpretations where it's like, yeah, no, he's not perfect. Yeah. He's made mistakes. You know, when, when you're a thousand years old, you have made mistakes. <laughs> Big ones. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I like I said, I like Al, so I, I'm, I have been giving Thor a chance on this one. I, I like it. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, like I said, it's Al. The art so. is super good too. Oh um, yeah, the art is great. Martin Coca Cola, yeah, I he is amazing. Oh yeah, and that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, nothing else. Yeah, every the art on all these issues has been great. Uh, yeah. So yeah, shout out to Marvel for this week's uh, comics. Exactly, but yeah, I that X Four stuff is good. Yes, yeah, so like uh, we're uh, resetting to like a more pleasant beast Traditional. Yeah. yeah which i was like i was like is this all gonna be mute because we're are we gonna reset the timeline is, anyway of course of course but i hope well, they, they, they gotta buy their time till it happens yeah. but they, they i think they want to be more of a subtle transition than just abrupt like they have been doing with x-men yeah. for every time they had to reboot it it's been very abrupt so i think we're doing a more gentle transition mm-hmm. so it's not so jarring but i hope they keep i hope they keep this more classic version of the beast so well I, all the fans have been demanding it so oh yeah <laughs> Like nobody liked the other stuff at all. So. It's so weird. They had their out there. Like, there's a dark beast out there, isn't there? It's like <laughs> same with dark beast. But no, like you mentioned, the resurrection of Magneto number one that was good. I mean, well, it was basically the Storm show. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, they always got to backdoor you in somewhere. Like that's the thing about uh, the X books. Like hey, you think it's one thing, but like no, 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 <laughs> it's actually another thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm here for this. Yeah. <laughs> It's about damn time, you know? and you know this. This is going to set up Magneto as like their primary, because uh, you know every like de- what like once a decade they're like, oh, yeah, Magneto's on our side now. And then you have to have some <laughs> like, event no, that like he's, no, he's that, on his side. Yeah, he's you have asshole. to have some event where you know he turns him against them again. Because this time it'll be like, I asked you to leave me dead. Why couldn't you leave me dead? <laughs> exactly. But, like, here's the thing. It's like, if you know, you know. Him and Xavier are in this lover's quarrel. So that's all it takes is Charles pissing them off, you know? Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I'm leaving. I'm packing my bags, good sir. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the story of Magneto and Xavier. It's basically this couple. It's, that, it's a lover's quarrel. The couple, it's, it's a difference of opinion the, between lovers. This couple who's had the worst breakup in history and drug and all, all their, their fr- kids are dr- just all messed drug up. Drug all their kids and friends into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's the lens I look at it, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, that's the one thing I can give uh, the New Class trilogy, like, kind of, they really kind of leaned in on that. Mm-hmm. And rightly so. Like, I think they were so afraid to, like, actually see it through that lens. But that's how a lot of fans actually see it through that lens. Like, it doesn't have to be sexual. Like, you know. It, 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 Platonic it, life mates that just can't agree on anything, you know? And I know Lil's going to give a resounding yes to this, but is Xavier the problem? Because, oh, it's my friend. Of course fr- he is. It's my friend. It's my stepbrother. It's, you know, it's like, uh, maybe you're Babes, the problem, at kid. this point, it's you. You're the problem. <laughs> uh, he is the problem. And, and that, that's also a general, like, fan consensus at this point. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Magneto and Killmonger at this point. I don't think they did anything wrong. <laughs> She only killed a couple of people, but you gotta break a couple eggs to make an omelet. Oh! Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till we get that reset. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that 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 should do it for Marvel talk. I yes, think we can we can wrap it up. We got a whole special thing to do later today. That's right. <laughs> well, like just make me do three. All right, kids. So yes, uh, the first time won't be the last time. <laughs> hey. All right, kids. So, yes, next time we're going to do something a little different uh, since we are on the Madam Web theme here. Uh, we're going to cover the four issue uh, miniseries from the, the 90s, the Spider Woman one starring Julia Carpenter. So, yeah, Julia Carpenter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or as some of you may know her, Sydney Sweeney. Headlights McGee, what? Whoa. <laughs> uh. The savior of that movie? What? Exactly. Uh, that gonna be hurting even more. Oh, oh yeah, carry that movie in. No. <laughs> like, hopefully they spin um her. Hopefully she gets a movie spinoff out of the whole. I mean, movie. I'm sure that if it would be if, the smartest thing to do. If it makes enough money, I'm sure they could. Even if it doesn't, it's Sony. Let's be real. We all know that um Venom really shouldn't have uh, for yeah. a sequel, but 
They're like, good enough. We gotta keep this. We gotta keep the the Sony Spider Man universe alive. Spiderless universe. Alive. <laughs> oh, maybe they have the nerve to call it Sony Spider Universe. May- maybe they'll make a cameo in Craven the Hunter. <laughs> no, nobody deserves that. <laughs> I don't say they deserve it. I'm just saying that's a punishment. You know how Sony is. I mean, Michael Keaton didn't deserve a uh, cameo at the end of Morbius, but <laughs> um, well, he had to be sacrificed for the for the for the long game of maybe Tobey Maguire gets a for, a fourth movie after all, and he's married to Mary Jane and they have kids. That was the sacrifice. I think that is the long con of it all. Yeah. Again, why are we doing Madam Webs and Craven the Hunters? That's what we want, kids. In order, Toby Spider Man. Come on. <laughs> It's another negotiation, renegotiation that we can't really talk about because Tom Holland's not even solid right now. So. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, everything's kind of up in the air at Disney and Marvel right now. Oh so. wait, so, so could we could we do cosmic events and have an older Toby Spider Man as the MCU Spider Man? <gasps> is this why we're doing? <gasps> is this why we're doing? Mal- I feel like that's what we set it up for. Is this one wh- way or the other? It, Toby's coming back. Is this another reason why we're doing Ultimate Spider Man uh, series? Ooh. Oh. This would be the best corporate synergy because because not... I did like the interactions between Tom Holland and Toby. Oh not yeah, lie. yeah. Sorry, Andrew. No, oh. you know how I feel about you. <laughs> to Toby, you, you you were the letdown for me. Toby jumps over to be the MCU Spider Man, and Andrew gets to keep Sony. <laughs> yeah, Andrew can stay in the Sony. <laughs> we, maybe we can fix what happened in the second. I mean, I did like kind of like Emma Stone, so I think yeah. that would be great to revisit. Give me Although the, they, they broke up and it's been kind of nasty, so I don't know. Ew. Well, we're gonna... It's like a whole thing. Like, it's so late to, like, try to do the Recast. Stuff, but... <laughs> uh, I don't think we need another recast. Like, I think, I think, like I said, if Toby came to the MCU, we could give Andrew the Sony stuff for sure. Yeah. They just have to get better writers. Sorry, Ari. Oh, damn. Why don't you mind your business? <laughs> All right. Need any more rocket racers? Oh, damn. All right, and then in two weeks, we're going to cover Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, 30 through 35, the first appearances of Ezekiel and Moreland. Okay. Okay. Ezekiel was just, I don't get the hype. Yeah, I know, I know. It was the whole mystical thing, I know. Yeah. Doesn't work well with the Spider-Universe. I'm sorry, it doesn't. All right, and then at the end of the month, I will be joined by the Sydney Sweeney Fan Club to cover (laughs) Scarlet Spider number 16. A superhero name though. What? It was bound to happen. Sydney Sweeney. It's the alliteration. Oh, that's oh, that's true. She has a Stanley name. Oh yeah. And they both end in Y, like Sydney Sweet. Come on. <laughs> it was bound to happen. Exactly. Uh, all right, kids. So yes. So send us your thoughts on that, and then I gotta jump off here and figure out where we're gonna do our Juggernaut Month. Email us capes and lunatics at gmail. Can we do it in the summer? Can we make it for the summer? Sure, sure. I had some cannon fodder scheduled. Juggernaut but, uh, July. But. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll throw out one of those cannon fodders. Yeah, we'll do Juggernaut. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Uh, hold on. Let's because it. really, he is cannon fodder, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're doing jug- ju- 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 Juggernaut July. So, All right, kids. Uh, send us your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episode, social media, merchandise. Again, t-shirts, cups, phone cases. And, of course, you just rain random money on us through the uh, Cash App link. So, please, make it, it. It has to rain all the time. Make it rain. And, of course, uh, the Patreon. Because, once again, Lilith and I are going nuts over there. More insane every month. Uh, so, please join it as we get more. More vicious and brutal than ever. So find it all. Although February is a little bit naughty, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Fe- yes. A little spicy. That's right, kids. Yeah, subscribe for February so you can say. Oh, that's naughty. And I love it. Oh, that's naughty. I love it. Yes. Uh so fine. So find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right, kids, I'm not clairvoyant, but I can, I believe I can tell you that you can only find Lilith Hellfire on Facebook right now. Bring me if you want. I'm, I'm just a little old grandma on the internet at this point, but I think it's very important that you download both capes and lunatics and capes and lunatics sidekick speeds 
Listen to your podcast outside, get some fresh air while it lasts, see the sky while it lasts, and touch some grass while it lasts. <laughs> oh my. The, the earth is deteriorating quickly, guys. <laughs> Either do the six or do the nine. Pretty soon, Antarctica is going to be a beach vacation, so. <laughs> oh, you don't want to know the things I've done. Oh my god, that's where the one percent's going to go. They're going to have their uh, little summer homes down in Antarctica, uh, like all, all good supervillains do. Exactly. Superman's like, what? <laughs> oh my. Superior puss! Because we did talk at this time. Superior puss! I don't know if it's superior anymore. Oh. Adequate puss. Like above average puss. Adequate puss. <laughs> superior puss. Oh. A mess. Superior, the new superior Spider-Man series. Somebody was trying to sneak it in. Yeah, slot for a shekel. All right, kids. Yeah, come back next time for Julia Carpenter. Spider-Woman 1 through 4 from the 90s. And then in two weeks, yes, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, number 30 through 35. And then I'm sure, like I said, at the end of the month, the Sydney Sweeney Fan Club will give you their thoughts on Madam Web. But until then, swing on back. Flip, flip, flip it good. I saw that coming. <laughs>